Hello, everybody. It's John from Misfit Artist with the next part of our little fun storyboard action scene tutorials. I want to apologize up front. Uh, I am feeling a little bit sick. So, if anything wrong with my voice or anything like that, I do apologize, but, you know, no rest for the wicked. So, I'm going to go ahead and I just have a few things set up here. So, storyboard drawing fight scenes. The biggest thing to remember is just that it's an interaction. It's a uh, conversation, if you will. Well, I didn't do this well. <laughs> yeah, it's a conversation. So the two things that we want to look at are what is everybody's motivations and how are they feeling? So, you know, sometimes you need to put in a close-up on a character just to, to be angry. You know, sometimes that's all you need and that will convey exactly what you need to. So always keep that in mind. What's a uh, character's feeling in it? And again, what are their motivations? If you're punching and grappling with each other and all, you're doing that for a reason. And it can be as simple as character A wants character B, you know, dead. You know, so if, as, and if that's the case, just make sure that they're throwing that punch at the other character. You know, one thing I think that can weaken a lot of action scenes is over dramatic flair. If a character just swing swinging a sword around, maybe it's to wind up, maybe it's to do this, that, the other thing, but if it's not showing that, you know, and you know, they're sending an attack to these two characters, it's really kind of a waste. And again, it's normally a little bit more complicated than that. A good fight scene has, like I say, good motivation, a reason for fighting. So this guy here is obviously acting as a wall between these guys and our smaller character over here and i think that's even more exemplified here uh the shot the actual shot in the animation has a nice little pan so you're starting here he's all high up he has power he's sending a, a you know his little tentacle boy down and you know these guys may take up more they may be bigger especially combined but they're the ones being pushed back the other ones that are clearly defending. So that's the first part of it there. Next thing is, and I've been told that I should change this, but at the end of the day, who's dominant and who's submissive in an interaction? Again, if you're thinking about this as a conversation, who's running the talk? Who's the one asking questions? Who's answering questions? Who's kind of controlling the flow of the conversation? You know, if it's an argument, who's winning? Who has the good points? And in these two, um, you know, we're setting up these scenes. This one has background information. We basically have monsters versus humans. And the humans are obviously, you know, they're putting up a fight. But, you know, there's someone behind him. He's down. She's still standing and seemingly good to go, but she's surrounded. You know, we've got... Character one, just, you know, this up here, everywhere you look, there's more going on. And so the big thing here is that you can see that the focal point or primary character or image isn't necessarily, again, kind of the biggest, most identifiable form here is not the one in power. And that's conveyed with, you know, the face. You know, that helps. The fact that, you know, one leg is coming backwards. You know, she's stepping away, clearly. She's not, you know, she's not running. She's not doing that. Uh, here, it's a similar thing. We're surrounding them. She's landed a good hit over here. But he's still coming. You know, her shield may have stopped this guy. You know, we're we're stopping, we're pushing him back, but he's clearly still reaching across and coming in at her. And then you know we got critter over here again, sneak attacks. I mean, we don't need to see 
you know, a whole basically thing about storyboarding, even though storyboarding will eventually be in video form, each individual frame should tell the story. Her clothes are tattered as she's torn up. She used to have more armor on was the point of that. But the fight has not gone well. You know, you can see clearly she she had more friends. It has not gone well. The next thing I want to talk about is focusing on the beginnings and ends of actions. Um, this is obviously before, and fights don't just have beginnings and ends. There's middles, but if we're, I'm, I'm going to simplify this down, and we're going to talk about one-on-one -on -one fights. One-on-one -on -one fight traditionally won't last too long, and at the end of the day, there's one primary deciding move that takes down the opponent if it's a multiple person on one person or crowd versus crowd there's a few other rules but still that's all comprised of these singular fights excuse me sorry for that um yeah so and each act like the beginning of this action we have and this is a very simple stick figure drawing again that's the idea of storyboard we're conveying this very quickly we have the scythe coming up and around this guy. We know how blades work. And the angle here, which is something we're going to get into, clearly shows how that cut's going to go. And at the end here, even if you want to convey like the speed, the fact that she was brutal on him, you can look at it and be like, okay, well, if we have one cut, two cut, three cut, four cut, yeah, we're not idiots. We know that... You know, there was multiple slices there. And so you can do a little bit with your after image stuff. But one way to make something kind of messy is to try to think about, you know, if a sword swing starts here, it's going to end here. And in animation, the rules are a little different, but even then, you're only going to have so many frames in here because uh, what I actually was brought to me by a martial arts instructor recently is a sword, a punch, these are all things that are kind of like a gun. It happens fast. You don't see, you know, every single one of these. You see whoosh. So if you do want to get more energy and more vibes and you want to show, especially when you're storyboarding, instead of every single bit of this, have a little bit of your wind up, a little bit of your, so you have your wind up and your ease in. And here you would have some of your uh, follow through. And then he, as for the middle one, all you're normally going to need is, I mean, it's just in between really. So I would literally just be like, whoosh. Because again, if you're going through someone, that's going fast. You don't need... And even if you're cutting through something, you're making that uh, an impact. Think about what kind of impact you're doing. If it's a sword slicing through something, like even bamboo. You're, you know, you're not going to have... You know, your sword's going to be down here. That's what you're going to see. If you, if you, and this is a rule that can very much be broken, but break it for a reason. If you want to have your bamboo and your sword is in the middle of it, that's totally valid. You can do that. But it's not the important shot, unless, again, there's something in your story that makes it more important. This. I mean, look, from an image, it looks like it might just be stuck. And if that's the case, then yeah, obviously you need to be able to draw things penetrating stuff. Like here, I, you know, he's going in. He's stuck in there. Focus on these, and you can get better at filling in the blanks later. So let's see, what's the next hit? Ah, uh, yes. Strikes and impacts cross in an X. Again, another rule that isn't fully necessary. But I think it helps. So we got B. 
big monster boy over here by a small character over here. He's swinging this big old lugging bat at her. Clearly it came this way, and she is blocking up against a wall here. So if you look at the line of action from the arms of the bat and the line of action of her weapon, we're making a cross. That's easy to see. You know, these are things that are, again, just easy to comprehend here. Most sword blocks are going to be, you know, we have, and you're blocking, it's going to go that way. Even if it's a punch. You know, if we go at one of my favorite blocks, it's, I call it cell phone block, because it's what my martial arts school calls it. You know, we have this here, and another arm would come here. What do you see? An X. Kicks. They're going to come here. Say he extended his, out, his leg out. Whether it's with an arm or the char another character's leg, we have an X. And then even... The characters themselves may make an X. An X is just one of those things that feels like shorthand for conflict. A stab is going through him. We have his line of action to make our X. We have a similar thing here. We have Woof and Woof. Uh, even when you're anticipating an action, there are exceptions to this rule. Oh, real quickly. Back to the bamboo. Same deal. Two lines of action are always going to make that intersection. So, grappling and holds. They have a few more parallels here. But even then, you'll still see arm, arm, arm. Actually, let's do a different part for this guy. See arm, arm, arm. So there's still, aggression will still equal that X. But you don't look for it as much, because a lot of holds especially will have the whole idea is that his arm is being pulled into his body. And so if I, if we brought this character over, which actually here, I'll go ahead and open that file up. I think I have it somewhere. Or, no, never mind. I'm not going to do it. Let's say that we brought his arm up even higher, which for one, obviously would be painful if you look at the angles here with his body. And we have Flopsy over here, a little bit more on top of him. Then, because what's happening here, the, if you want to get good at drawing, grappling, and joint lock stuff, I really suggest learning it to an extent because that's going to help. There's there's nothing else to it. You just need to learn. Because what's happening with a joint lock is one of two things. Or primarily one of two things. There's always exceptions, especially in fighting. But it's either painful. So if you look at, if you feel your shoulder and you try to move it back, obviously there's a point where you can't move it back anymore and imagine it being forced back. That hurts. It may break tendons or bones. It's a bad time. So the way that joint locks and grappling works is they're causing enough pain that they submit. Or uh, if you look at um, what they're supposed to teach. Uh, so one of the martial arts, I, some martial arts I learned is what they teach uh, law enforcement in other countries. And a lot of those are based around not hurting. They're based around the mechanical uh, functioning of the body. So, let's think of... So, with this arm bar, the whole idea is that it's being... It's painful, but he's also being moved in a way that he can't just move his arm back. So, a few tips can be... Uh, when I do actual martial arts, the thumb is always going to be facing the opposite way of how your arm is being bent. That's just one of those things. I mean, twist your thumb. That Because that means... Normally, it means that your elbow is ready to bend that way. That's how the thumb and arm work. So if you start bringing it back this way, you're basically just fudging with that elbow there. Um, and think about how it's being held. You know, you can't just have, <laughs> you know, character standing, and then another character just wrapped around them. Yeah. This is not an arm bar, obviously. Um, 
And again, think about the anticipation. The whole idea is that Flopsy came by here. You know, they were Arrow and him were in a bar. Some guy was getting mouthy, and Flopsy said, "Okay, no." So from his hair, he obviously came from this way. What happened to my pressure sensitivity? Oh, I'm on the wrong pen. That's what. <laughs> so he came from here. His back is going this way. He's stepping on him to keep him down. But obviously he has, you know, let's get another color here. Boy's got his arm here. He has one arm. So Flossie says, okay, you want to play that way? We'll bring your arm up here. So now the arm is going up and the body is going down. So keep things like that in mind. If you want to do a good lock, there needs to be that opposing force sometimes. If you're doing something like a choke hold, again, you could, if you want to make your character all strong and overpowering, you know, just a little hand on the throat, you know, that can work. That's going to be sold in, uh, you know, the expression. But you can also get into things that are a little bit more technical, maybe a little bit more complex, but they're going to be more interesting. One way to choke someone is by grabbing their shirt collar, tightening it around them. You have the good old... So again, like I said, you're seeing the lines of action are more parallel here. <laughs> Let me go ahead. Yeah. This is all about overlap, obviously. So the more you can get with your anatomy, your perspective, your shape language, the better this is going to be for you. Um, so he's going to grab up here because that's what you normally do when you're being choked. You're trying to get out of it. And always watch out for tangents when you're doing this stuff. It gets hard, but... So, yeah. Something like that. So, I said, that's going to have that less of the X and more of a parallel thing. You're still going to have some amount of intercross normally. But the whole thing is that one character is being pulled or pushed a little more. <laughs> we can go back to our, our shield guy here. His line of action is here. It's being pressed up against the shield. Again, we have a little bit of that, but it's almost just making its own shape overall there. And remember, with this, I mean, obviously, again, the thing that makes this an interesting uh, confrontation, this interesting co confrontation, is that energy is continuing to move. You know, maybe this guy would bounce back a little bit, but, you know, he's grabbing onto the shield. He's still going forward and pushing her in. You know, her arm isn't out here with the shield. Her arm is scrunched up. She's holding the line, but only just barely. Uh, theoretically a stab, you extend your arm. So if she was pa if she was more in power, I might put it there and the character back here more. But no, again, we have another close to the body. And these are the things that really make things stand out, I think. So... And also, again, just like last time, your environment, where you're fighting, you know, the trees here are causing some of that claustrophobia, that horror element of it. You know, she's not, you know, none of these characters here are necessarily safe. You know, but sometimes you use it to your advantage, you know. This character's hopping up on here, and maybe... They'll launch themselves off from here to get behind, or even just directly into him to go. He'll be like, "Oh no!" So we could have something like that, you know. Even if it's not an interesting environment, a floor exists. You know, they're, you know, you're not just standing up, boxing, going bip, 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 one, two, three. No. You're getting slammed in the floor. You fall down. You jump up. Uh, that's what makes... Those are the things that are going to take your fight up. So, 
hope you guys enjoy it's not necessarily a short video but i tried to kind of condense a lot of ideas in here oh i have one more thing of uh see my side notes were yeah so yeah like i said setting and style or side so your setting setting is very important how do your characters fight? That's what I mean by style. I and mean, that's just going to come from you studying. Are they martial arts? Are they tactical? Are they drunk? So those are questions you have to ask yourself. Uh, if you want fantastical physics or magic or whatever, get down to the core of what a fight is first. Get these things worked out, and then you can start having characters that are much bigger than your other characters. You can have characters... Uh, that fly and they're over top of your characters. Uh, things like that, you know. All of these rules should still apply. But if you want to make something fantastical, you need to take more time on it then. You need to see that, that key blast charge up. You need to see what the spell does. The other thing is just clarity. You know, a lot's going on here. This character's half in shadow. But you can see... You know, that basic shape there. You know, with how messy this is, again, we have a character and a clear setting. You know, make it so that even if it's a simple stick figure, you have your primary bits here. You know, if you want to cover things up in shadow, then then go for it. But don't go from the start like, ah, it's just going to mean shadow doesn't matter. Well, I mean, sometimes, I mean, that's, I guess, more painter illustrator thing. But, like, when I'm making a scene, I know that there's going to be shadow and stuff. I know something's going to be more hidden. So I need to be like, okay, let's get these fundamental shape silhouettes down so that you can tell what's going on. So, yeah, that's the basics there. Um, if you have any questions, please do comment. Uh, share this video with someone else who's maybe having trouble with the scene or just wants to learn some cool tricks. Uh, and I will see you guys next time. Uh, I don't know if the next one will be another storyboard video, but if it is, next storyboard video will be actually compositing and scripting and choreographing a scene, not just these. We're going to learn how all these go together to make a story, a sequence, a fight. So I hope you guys look forward to it and be safe out there. Bye.